the currency of living is how you spend your moments. And if you spend your moments worrying, and if you spend your moments thinking about bad memories, and you spend your moments being afraid, it adds up really fast. If you have one bad memory and you think about it for a minute here and two minutes there and three minutes there, and it adds up to 30 minutes, not to mention if you spend an hour a day worrying about stuff, uh, that together is an hour and a half. And boy, now we're talking, you know, north of 500 hours in a year, which means in 10 years, we're talking 5,000 hours. And in 40 years, we're talking 20,000 hours that you're planning to either worry about something or remember something unpleasant. And uh, it, if you look at it that way, it's astronomical. And when people say, well, I'm not planning to do it, I just do it. Well, that's not really true because if you're not doing something in your head to make a better plan, uh, then your brain will continue to do what it does. Brain is designed to make things familiar and whatever's familiar, it keeps doing until you have a way of altering it. This book gives you little things you can do. They take 10 minutes. Most of them are not psychological tricks, but neurological tricks so that if you follow the instructions that you can get rid of bad memories. And uh, if you have a bad memory that you think about every day or three times a week, it all adds up. And if you can make it so that that memory stops popping up by itself, just by doing something that takes five, six, seven minutes. If you have a fear that you're constantly worrying that you're gonna be in a situation where the fear will come up. Uh, you know, the biggest fear is of public speaking. The second biggest one is social phobia of just going up and talking to somebody that you don't know and, you know, introducing yourself and saying hello. Uh, a lot of people have fear of heights, fear of flying, fear of all of these things. And if you can spend, do something that takes 15 minutes and, and, and get all that time back, then you can make a big plan. You can swap all of this wasted time and make a plan to become more positive to, to and, and we, you know, there's a day where you increase your confidence and there's a day where you build new beliefs and a day where you make a longer range plan where you go into the future and build something you're really drawn to. There's a, a, a thing about getting over addictive behaviors. There's a little something of everything that I've compiled over the past 50 years. Uh, remember, all the clients that came to me all these 50 years have been given up on by everybody. So I had to build strong things that would get them to be convinced because they would always come in and they'd be rather hopeless. And, and I found out if I could convince them. And there's nothing more convincing than having something change. And if you change the way you think, changes the way you feel, and therefore it changes what you're capable of doing. And, uh, you know, overwhelming delusions of understanding can be a big trap. You know, if you understand yourself or you understand your problems, you understand why you are the way you are, then you probably aren't making a plan to be a different person. And the one thing you are is your brain is a learning machine. We are an adaptive organism. We adapt to everything. If you take a human being and you put them at 7,000 feet, their blood will get thicker so that they can, they can stay warmer with less clothes. Uh, they'll, if you put them where there's less oxygen, their blood will get thinner and they can, you know, uh, they can breathe better. We adapt to environments, maybe not as quickly as we'd like to, but we do. And when you're not adapting, you're not learning. And uh, these are simple tricks to begin to learn to adapt.